past Tuesday on a cloudy, overcast day, we went to the unveiling of Kahindi Wiley statue, Rumors of War, with a thousand or so others. And as Jesus asked today, what did you go out to see? I found some background information helpful about the monument. The title comes from both Matthew and Mark's gospel with Jesus reminding his followers, many will come in my name and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Do not be alarmed. This must take place for kingdom will rise against kingdom. You see, some scholars think that the rumors of war text from the gospel refers to an intense resistance when Emperor Caligula ordered to install his bust, a marble setting of his head, in the worshiping temple. Whenever someone elevates their image to God, there's always danger that will follow. Historians have claimed that Caligula succeeded Tiberius as emperor in Rome, but towards the end of his life he began to grow corrupt and erratic, and that he began to see himself as God. He even presumably tried to make his own horse a member of council, and he ordered that the sun should rise at night too. As you might suspect, the Romans became tired and concerned and angered, and finally he was killed in 41, and many of his statues were destroyed and defaced, but only 42 bust and full portrait statues still exist today. And you can find one at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. Caligula's biographer quotes his often phrase of saying this, remember that I have the right to do anything to anybody. But after he died, it was quoted that he learned by actual experience that he was not God. Today we have John the Baptist imprisoned by Herod Antipas, and he sits in his cell and he begins to wonder and to worry that maybe all the work that he had done for the coming of the Messiah was not going to take place in Jesus. Did he actually prepare for the real God and just messed up? In our gospel today, John's own disciples are coming to John, relaying news of the ministry that Jesus is carrying out. John and his followers, as many, had this image of like a great emperor riding in to claim authority as God's own king. And Jesus, as he often does, responds to God by quoting the scripture, quoting the very scripture that we heard today in Isaiah. He tells John, the works of Christ are being done. People who once could not see or walk or hear are cleansed. It reminds us that Jesus did not come to take an earthly type power, but instead to bring healing to a broken world by those who abuse power. That Jesus is God, and that God is love, and any ministry not carried out in love is for a false kingdom and an earthly title. found it interesting in recent news that Kim Jong-un, the ruler of North Korea, saddled up on a white horse so that he could climb a mountain as his dad once did. 
And quickly, some analysts began to express concern that he was showing power, that he was making a visual threat of war by this horse ride. It reminds us that images of leaders on horses have been placed throughout human history. And I would ask us the question about a symbol of any person's action as we think about ourselves as disciples of Jesus Christ. And there's no better person to find the answer to that crucial question than in the life and ministry of John the Baptist. You see, John the Baptist was a signpost. Another faithful member of God's expanding story pointing us towards God in any person who's elevated that is not a signpost towards the saving grace of God becomes a false god like Caligula. For a signpost is to invite us into conversation. A signpost brings us to a place where we should question so that we can listen as we seek to understand this larger understanding of God's love. For me, this is what the symbol of this statue represents. A place that we can go and see, but a place that can ask questions in our hearts. Again, as John tells, as Jesus tells John's own disciples, what did you go out to see? The answer is a signpost to spark more and more conversation. John had heard rumors about Jesus' work which did not line up with John's expectation and others. John had forgotten the words of Isaiah in his own despair, likely frightened that his legacy would be in vain. But Jesus unveils the words of being God's son at a later time. But first, Jesus is trying to continue a conversation to take place so that more healing can occur and that love can be shown. You see, Jesus was claiming his messiahship through his works in using the words of Isaiah to echo in the ears of those who listen. For the works of Christ comes for the poor, the sick, and the oppressed. This is where we are to share ourselves. The works can become a signpost, helping to not only take others, but to also take us into new conversations. Conversations with the love of Christ shapes us into the disciples God calls us to be. For conversation leads to conversion. Conversion takes us into transformation and reminds us that we should never be afraid to talk with each other about things that trouble us or confuse us. <clears throat> For Jesus knows very clearly that if he would come out and call himself the Messiah as he does his work, that it's likely that he would simply become a sailmate with John and his voice and his healing would no longer take place. We're in this time of waiting, in this time of Advent where we're invited to become part of a conversation of love. And as we hear in the letter to James, that reminds us to be patient, don't grumble. And remember that prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord before will always help to point us. And then we hear in the Magnificat, as Mary prepares to bring God's Son into the world, that he will come to cast down the mighty from their thrones and to lift up the lowly. Jesus ends 
the gospel lesson today, that John's work is complete, that John did prepare that highway that we first heard in Isaiah for God's people so that no one could be led astray. Isaiah and Mary and John were all necessary signposts pointing to the conversation about Jesus coming into our broken world. So a signpost becomes that invitation that we continue in this work of healing. For such healing is the ultimate form of love where we truly allow ourselves to love only one God and to love our neighbors more than we even love ourselves. Amen.